Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Guy Spear, and Lee Lu. These are just some of the super investors who own Bank of America. Right now, Berkshire Hathaway is the biggest shareholder, owning 13% of the company. BAC stock is Warren Buffett's second biggest position. With their stock price down in the last year, is BAC stock a potential opportunity? We'll perform a BAC stock analysis like Warren Buffett, one of the greatest bank investors of all time. We'll reverse engineer his decision-making process to look at the numbers before estimating a fair value for Bank of America. Along the way, there's going to be not one but two key bonus metrics that just might be the tipping points when analyzing Bank of America for your stock portfolio. Then you'll want to watch till the end when we give our rating. Right now, Bank of America trades for $26.99. Year-to-date, their stock price is down 20%, while the S&P 500 is up 13%. Bank of America has underperformed the market since banks started failing in spring of 2023. Still, Warren Buffett has held strong. He sold all of his bank stocks outside of just Bank of America and Citibank, which is pretty telling for the business. In their last five years, Bank of America's stock price is down 5% overall. In the last decade, they're compounding at 6% annually. They beat the market for most of this time and have just underperformed in the last year. When we go back before the global financial crisis, it's a different story for Bank of America. Their stock price is down 42% overall. Buffett did not make his investment until after this time. Since then, with his big ownership in the company, he's likely beat the market in his investment. So again, is their stock undervalued or overvalued? Right now, they trade just a dollar above their 52-week low. They're down $12 from their 52-week high. Still, there's not a lot of short interest in the business. And how big is Bank of America? They're huge. They have a $212 billion market cap. Bank of America is one of the largest financial institutions in the United States with more than $2.5 trillion in assets. It's organized into four major segments, consumer banking, global wealth and investment management, global banking, and global markets. Bank of America's consumer-facing lines of business include its network of branches and deposit gathering operations, retail lending products, credit and debit cards, and small business services. The company's Merrill Lynch operations, which it acquired during the global financial crisis, provide brokerage and wealth management services, as does its private bank. Wholesale lines of business include investment banking, corporate and commercial real estate lending, and capital market operations. Bank of America has operations in several countries, but it's primarily U.S. focused. Now let's dive deep into their numbers. When we start with metric number one, we want their average P.E. in the last five years to be below 12 and a half times. That's the historical averages for banks. Bank of America's P.E. has been across the board here. They hit a low of six and a half times earnings with the spring of 2020 market crash. Then as their stock rebounded, they went all the way as high as 21 and a half times earnings in the spring of 2021. Since then, their P.E. has been declining. Today, they trade at just under eight times earnings. And on average throughout this time, BAC is trading for 12 times earnings. They just sneak in there. This is under bank's historical average, which means this is a check on metric number one. Metric number two, we want their average return on equity to be above 9%. Again, we're looking for this because this is above bank's historical averages. Bank of America has earned pretty steady returns on equity coming in around 10%. That was the case in four of these last five years. 2020 was different for the business, where their returns on equity were just under 7%. Still, when we average these out, Bank of America earns 9.9% returns in a given year. That's above our benchmark. It's another check on metric number two. For the most part, since the global financial crisis, these have been pretty steady. Metric number three, we want to see sales growth in the last five years. Their revenues in this time are up. They grew from just under $88 billion in 2018 to more than $92 billion today. Their sales are up by 10%. It's another check on metric number three. Metric number four, we want to see the business earning more. When we look at their numbers up until today, Bank of America has actually grown their earnings. They earned $29.8 billion in their last 12 months which is up from $28 billion in 2018. They've grown their earnings by 6%. With a check here, we're perfect so far through four metrics. A bank is really valued based on their earnings. We'll look at their average here in a later metric. Just keep in mind, Bank of America earned $26.3 billion in an average year over this time. Put that in the bank for later as we'll come back to it. 
Next in metric number five, we're looking for deposit growth. This was the big problem for banks since 2020. Their deposits grew like wildfire and they had not so great investment opportunities at the same time. With too much money flowing into the banks, they ended up doing stupid things. Bank of America is not an exception here. They've grown their deposits by 36%. Some of the reason their stock price is down and a major reason they're lagging their peers is because they invested some of these deposits in long dated bonds that are a lot lower than today's yields. Unlike say Signature or Silicon Valley Bank, it doesn't look like this will be an issue that causes any bank failure here because of this big deposit growth. It's something to look at closely for banks. Next metric number six, we want their share count to be going down. This is a major reason Warren Buffett's invested in the bank because he likes how they allocate their capital. Besides some of those long dated yields, Bank of America hasn't done a lot of stupid things. Brian Moynihan, their CEO, has run the bank in a conservative way. His philosophy is responsible growth. A good bank naturally needs a place for the excess money they generate in their business. Bank of America has used the money they've earned to buy back their shares. In this time, they've reduced their share count by 20%, giving existing shareholders like Warren Buffett one-fifth more ownership in the business than he had at the start. They did all this without those owners having to spend a dime. Because of the valuations a lot of these buybacks took place at, and because they've been so steady, it's likely a good thing for long-term shareholders. This is another check on metric number six, Bank of America is still perfect. Next, we want their interest expense on deposits as a percentage of total deposits to be decreasing. Banking is a commodity business with money more or less being the ultimate commodity. By paying lower interest on their deposits than peers, Bank of America potentially has a low cost producer advantage. It's not unexpected that we're going to see their interest expense rise here. In this time, they paid 1.3% interest on total deposits in 2018. This has increased to 2.6% today, which means this is our first X of the day on metric number seven. It's not surprising given the interest rate hike we've seen. What really matters is how banks make their money, which is based on the spread of what they pay out in interest on deposits versus what they get back by making loans or using their money elsewhere. That risk-free rate is a lot higher today than it was in 2018. So again, not much of a surprise. This isn't a big knock to the business. Metric number eight, we want their non-interest expense as a percentage of deposits to be decreasing. This is a more conservative way of calculating what's called a bank's efficiency ratio, which usually looks at this as a percentage of revenues, but deposits are what really matter for banks which is why we're taking this conservative view. Their non-interest expenses were 3.8% of deposits in 2018. Today, they've decreased this. These make up 3.3% of deposits, which means Bank of America's operations are more efficient today than they were in the past. This is likely a good sign for their overall business performance. This is a check on metric number eight. Then a bank can perform pretty well, but it doesn't really matter unless that bank is safe. One of the ways we can look at the safety of a bank is to look at their institutional deposits. We want these deposits as a percentage of total deposits to be decreasing. Ideally, these should be as close to zero as possible. Part of this, as we saw with the blow up of First Republic and Silicon Valley banks, is that it's harder for small sums of deposits to leave a bank than it is for large institutional depositors. 3% of Bank of America's deposits in 2018 were institutional. Today, this is zero. That's exactly what we're looking for. This is a check on metric number nine. Before we give a fair value to the business, how about we check in on our bonus? Right now, Bank of America pays a market beating 3.36% dividend yield, but are their dividends safe? Banks tend to pay above average dividends, again, as an outlet for their capital. What really matters is that their dividends are supported by their earnings because of the type of business they are. That is the case for Bank of America. They support their earnings today. They've also supported their earnings in the last five years. It's what we want to see. This is a check on our bonus. There's another bonus we'll get to after our valuation. That's a crucial safety metric when looking at banks. In fact, it's one of the ways you could have spotted the failures of both Silicon Valley and First Republic Bank ahead of times, so you won't want to miss it. Before we get to it, what is Bank of America potentially worth? The big metric of them all, metric number 10, it's our valuation for Bank of America. We want their market cap to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by 10. This can give us a starting point that we can adjust up or down to look at a fair value for the business. 
Right now, they have a $212.5 billion market cap. They're one of the largest banks in the world. Earlier in our analysis, we learned they earn $26.3 billion in an average year. When we multiply that by 10, it gives us a $263 billion potential fair value. That's more than $50 billion above Bank of America's market cap. It's a check on metric number 10. Bank of America looks like a potential opportunity. It appears to be undervalued. Don't just run out and go buy the business. This isn't financial advice. Plus you don't wanna miss out on our safety metric. In our second bonus, we're looking at the bank's potential safety. We want Bank of America's median 10-year returns on equity to be above their 10-year compounded annual growth rate in their deposits. This was a key way you could have spotted some of these bank failures ahead of time. You ideally don't want this to be the case for Bank of America. Simply put, it's potentially very dangerous when a company is growing their assets faster than their earnings. Bank of America had 10-year median returns of 6.8%. In this time, they've grown their deposits annually at 5.7%. Their returns are able to support their deposit growth. It's what we want to see from a safety perspective. This is a check on our bonus. Before we give our rating, Warren Buffett cares a lot about the numbers, but he cares even more about the qualitative factors. Let's learn what these are for BAC. Starting with the long thesis, number one, Bank of America is poised to succeed on a nationwide scale and there seems to be no structural reason it can't be one of the strongest bank franchises going forward. Number two, at GSIB, Bank of America should not have to worry about deposit flight, and its valuation has become less demanding recently, potentially increasing future upside. Number three, Bank of America is seeing exceptional digital adoption, and there still seems to be something left in the tank for expense savings, potentially helping the bank better absorb inflationary expense pressure. But it's not all sunshine and roses. Let's look at a short thesis for the business too. Number one, rate sensitivity is a double-edged sword, as is leverage to the state of the economy. If the economy ever falters and rates are cut, watch out for a potential downside. Number two, the easy expense cuts for Bank of America are probably over. And with expenses starting to creep up again, it may be difficult for the bank to fight back. Number three, there are few positive catalysts left for the bank. Funding costs are running higher. Net interest income may have peaked. Higher regulatory scrutiny is likely. And a potential recession may be around the corner. Let's keep Bank of America's qualitative factors in mind as we combine them with the numbers to give a rating and get an idea of how Warren Buffett is looking at the business. So far, we've learned through our Bank of America stock analysis, ticker symbol BAC, their numbers look very good across the board. What really stands out is a reasonable valuation, above average returns, stable growth in their sales and their earnings. They have had big deposit growth, but they're not institutionally funded and the bank has become more efficient. The big win for Warren Buffett and these other super investors is big returns of capital to shareholders through both the bank's above average dividend and their 20% share buybacks. Bank of America looked good on both of our safety metrics and both of our bonuses. The company is a potential opportunity that may be undervalued. While there could be some pain on the horizon, structurally, Bank of America seems like a sound business. Warren Buffett sold off his other bank stocks besides Citigroup. And while he's not keen on the banking sector overall, Buffett was the person who approached Bank of America, not the other way around for this investment. As the biggest shareholder in the company, he's likely to hold on unless something structurally changes. With all that said, Bank of America is an excellent opportunity to dig in and research. From what we've learned, a rough estimate of Bank of America's fair value per share is around $33. If you enjoyed this BAC stock analysis, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out this next video.